Hello, I'm Maureen Emerson, and I'm very happy to be able to talk a little about my recently published biography, Escape to Provence. Escape to Provence is the story of Winifred, Lady Fortescue, author of Perfume from Provence, a bestseller of the 1930s and 40s, and of her rather mysterious American friend, Elizabeth Starr. The two women and the friends they gathered round them lived on a hillside in the village of Opio, four houses in all. Many years later, when we all discussed Peggy's books in the south of France, no one seemed to know exactly where this hillside was. But when I eventually found out, a circle was closed. For around 1979, as a rather bored housewife, I decided to shop in Opio for a change. I had walked to the bottom of that hill in the Cartier Saint-Père and gazed up into its dim peacefulness. I didn't climb up more than a few metres without turning back and asking the first person I came to what the hill was called. Ça, c'est la colline des Anglais, came the unexpected answer. Although I didn't return to the Cartier Saint-Père for about 15 years, I never forgot that steep, quiet hill and often wished we'd chosen to live in Opio. When I eventually discovered this had been the home of Peggy and Elizabeth, I simply didn't know how to account for the fact that I had already been there and found it fascinating, and not being especially spiritual, I still can't. But research itself is above all practical, and once I decided I wanted to know more about this group of friends, I began to contact members of their families. What is clear is that one can't begin to search for information on people no longer with us without relying on the generosity of those who still are. Coming across coincidences during research is great fun. Perhaps the most striking is that of peace and prosperity. Pay and prosperity are the names given to the two tall slender cypresses often seen on either side of the entrance to a Provencal farmhouse or garden. Peggy Fortescue found them at the entrance to her domain at Maganiosque, her perfume from Provence home, and the illustrator E. H. Shepherd drew them there as one of the many pictures for the book. When we began house hunting in Sussex several years ago, we were given details of a certain village house. As we approached, we found on each side of the gate to a tiny courtyard, peace and prosperity, two Mediterranean cypresses planted there by the owner. I remarked how clever it was of them to have peace and prosperity. Of course, they didn't know what on earth I was talking about, but we did buy the house. Another coincidence. In the south of France, we had lived in Valbon, the next village to Opio. Around the beginning of this research, we moved to Sussex, as I have mentioned. I'd always known that Peggy Fortescue had made her wartime base in a gamekeeper's cottage in the county. But as usual, she did not give the name of the village. Digging down through the usual layers of information, I found that her cottage, which she named Many Waters, had been on an estate near, once again, the next village to ours. This time, I was surprised. Pulled down a couple of years ago, I was in time to explore it in its deep valley and marvel at its isolation and that the only way to civilization was to climb up one of several extremely steep slopes. Life had determined that Peggy and Elizabeth should never rest for long. Challenges were presented and embraced wholeheartedly and in the end there was a price to pay but they are both at rest now in the small cemetery in Opio, opposite their quiet hillside where so much had happened. 